So today I wanna to reveal the secret investing technique that 99% of people don't know about. That sounds like I'm about to sell you something. I promise I'm not gonna sell you anything. This is not a sponsored video. This is 100% free. It's called the seven simple steps of investing. And the reason that it's seven is because I'm gonna to try to relate this concept to you through the lens of my favorite video game of all time, Final Fantasy VII. Now in this game, you're playing as a rebel group called Avalanche, and you're trying to save the planet from an evil corporation called Shinra, which is sucking up the planet's valuable resources, drawing parallels to global warming, but it's even worse than that. The best way to beat the game is to level up your characters and make them as powerful as possible so that one day you could defeat Sephiroth, Emerald, and Ruby weapons. And the best way to do that is to level up your characters at the end of the game in something called the Northern Crater. And the idea is to beat these little things called magic pots because they gave you a ton of experience points and got you to level 99 much faster, but it would still take you months and months. So in order to save yourself a lot of time, there's a few things you had to do first. And all of this is true when you're investing money as well. Well, most people think that investing is all about downloading an app like Robinhood, YOLOing their money into some random stocks, and then hoping for the best. Now you can do that, but there's a far better way to becoming a millionaire much faster. In video games, this process is called grinding. It's not this kind of grinding, it's not that fun. Grinding is very tedious, very repetitive, and boring, kind of like long-term investing. So to maximize this boring period, there's a few things we have to equip first. In Final Fantasy VII, there's this material called EXP+, Plus, which when equipped, gives you double the experience points so we could level up faster. But because nothing is easy in video games, you also have to level up the materia. And the fastest way to do that is to equip Cloud's apocalypse weapon, which gives you triple the SP. SP is the stuff you need to power up materia, obviously. Now, if you didn't follow any of that, the point is playing this video game as a kid taught me really early on that it's the exact same thing in life. Sure, we could go on grinding in our lives for the next 10, 20, 30 years, buying our stocks and our cryptos, but there's a better, more optimal strategy to maximize our dollars so that we can get richer faster. So now let me actually show you step by step how to do this. Let's begin. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the secret strategy guidebook of life. I'm kidding, it's not secret, but you'd be surprised how many people don't actually know that there is a flow chart to investing. This video was inspired by my mom and dad who switched jobs this year because of the pandemic. And so their 401ks were rearranged and I had to help them set everything up again. And while I was doing that, they were asking me questions about it and I was trying to explain it to them and tell them my video game analogy, but they were like, what? I don't understand, Andre. And so I must have lost them somewhere between Sephiroth and Ultima Weapon. So I'll try to do a better job explaining it to you in this video. Let's just start with step number one. Now everyone knows the traditional financial advice of as soon as you turn 18, get yourself a Roth IRA so that you can put money into your retirement account for the next 30 years to become a millionaire. But it's not the best advice because there's a better path. So step one is to equip yourself with the best retirement account in the entire game. Now, if you work for another company, most likely they have something for you called the 401k account. If you don't have one, get one. A 401k is an employer sponsored defined contribution pension account. In simple words, it's an account that a company will offer its workers that people can put their money into from their paycheck before they get paid, which comes with special tax benefits. Now, I know you probably knew about that account, but what you might not have known about is that there's a very specific way that most people should go about it because you'll be presented with two choices, a Roth 401k and a traditional 401k. According to a place where money nerds like to hang out and debate things about money because they've got no friends, AKA the Bogleheads Forum, the overwhelming consensus is that most people should go for the traditional 401k. Not everyone, but most people will probably benefit. Now the secret technique is to get yourself a traditional 401k, put your pre-tax money into that account, and because you lowered your taxable income, AKA you're gonna pay less in taxes that year, you will then use the savings to fund your Roth IRA account. If none of that made any sense to you, let me break it down a little more. The current 401k limit is $19,500 for 2021, but that's moving up to $20,500 for the year 2022. Now, the first thing that's recommended is to put in money into your 401k account only up to what your employer is willing to match and nothing more. And that's the real reason that people love their 401ks for that employer match, which will match a certain percent of your annual salary. So for example, if you're making $50,000 a year and your employer matches up to 5%, that's two and a half thousand dollars. 
So you put in two and a half thousand dollars and then your employer puts in another two and a half thousand dollars. You don't have to put in all of this money at once. You can do it in smaller increments throughout the year, but that's a 100% return on your money, which is amazing. Step two is to find the enemies to fight so we can level up even faster, which of course is to pay off high interest rate debt. Now your high interest rate debt could be something like your credit card debt, which could charge you as high as 24% or maybe even more. And the reason for this is because very few things can give us a 24% rate of return on our money. And this is a guaranteed rate of return. I mean, very few things can do this. Maybe stocks can do it in a good year or Bitcoin in a good year, but you're not guaranteed that return. So doing this will net you between eight to 30% return on your money. That's a lot of EXP. Now let's move on to step number three. Step three is totally optional. It's sort of like a side quest to find a special item that we should equip, which is to get ourselves a health savings account, an HSA, which is a triple tax advantaged account, kind of like Cloud's apocalypse weapon, which has triple the slots, triple the fun. You know what I mean? I don't know what I mean. It's kind of like a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA fused to form Vegito. Or maybe Gogeta, if you're into that non-official canon Dragon Ball GT stuff. The HSA has a yearly contribution limit of $3,600. So don't put more money into it than that per year. And money that you put in here will be used to lower your taxable income, which means you'll pay less in taxes. Your investments inside of this account will grow tax-free and you can use this money tax-free as well when you withdraw it. That's why it's triple tax advantaged. So having this account will net you between eight to 10% return on your money, which is amazing, but there is a catch. See, I knew there's a catch. There's always a catch. And the catch is that you can only use this money to pay for medical expenses, hence, health savings account. Otherwise, it works like a traditional 401k. However, if you get to age 65, you can then use that money and withdraw it for anything you'd like. The catch is getting to level 65, but it's a tough life when you have no Phoenix down and you're faced with a Marlboro. I hated those things. Bad breath, GG. You just lost three hours worth of progress. Having said that, this step is optional. You don't need to do this, but it is a bonus. <laughs> now let's move on to step number four. Remember how I said your 401k goes up to twenty and a half thousand dollars in 2022? Well, you don't wanna maximize the account just yet. You only wanna put in what your employer is willing to match. And at that point you stop and you focus on a different level up strategy, which is to get yourself a Roth IRA. If you don't have one, get one. Yay for recycled jokes. Now there's two types of IRA accounts or as they're sometimes called IRAs, a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. Doesn't matter what you call it, I call it an IRA, but it's potato, potato, millennium falcon, millennial falcon. It's up to me to decide what kind of falcon I want. Maybe my millennial falcon has all the millennials on it and that's my falcon. Now, since we picked a traditional 401k, we want to diversify our tax strategy. So the recommended path is to get a Roth IRA. Now, a Roth IRA is similar to the 401k with a few differences. A Roth IRA is something that you are in direct control over. This is something that you are directing, not your company. So you have all the choices of whatever you wanna put in terms of investments there. Also, the difference is that a Roth IRA, you cannot use to deduct off of your annual income. Instead, you pay taxes now, but you'll save on taxes later when you're ready to retire. A traditional IRA is exactly the reverse. You'll pay taxes later, but you'll save on taxes now. Now a Roth IRA has a limit of $6,000 per year or $7,000 per year if you're over the age of 50. So this step, you need to focus on maxing out that $6,000 to the full extent. And after you've done that, we can move on to step number five, defeating the final boss. Step number five is to go back to the traditional 401k and max out the rest of that account, however much money is left. This is the hardest step in the game because remember, we don't have much gill left anymore. We've used up all of our potions and high potions and Phoenix downs. There's not a lot of resources because we've met our employer match. That could be several thousand dollars. We have maxed out the HSA, which is $3,600. We've maxed out the Roth IRA, which is $6,000. And now I'm asking you to go back to your traditional 401k, which is maxed out at $20,500 for the year 2022. That's a lot of money that not everyone will have, but maxing out that 401k is gonna net you something like 8% in after-tax money. Now, if you have any money left over after that point, you'll have two choices you can make. Choice one is to pay down medium interest rate debt, student loans, car loans, anything that's 
three, maybe 4% or lower. Focus on that. Or step two, if you wanna take more risks, you can finally download a taxable brokerage account like Robinhood and finally speculate on index funds, stocks, or Bitcoin or whatever else you wanna do. Which is crazy because most people think that this is step one. It's actually step five. Everyone else is just grinding without having the right equipment on. So this is the best strategy guide, but before you use it, there's just a few things I wanna mention that you should consider. The most important thing to remember about this strategy is if you're ever lost about where to start or where to go next, is to compare the interest rate on your debt against the expected rate of return on investment and the savings from your marginal tax rate from putting those investments inside of those accounts. And what I mean by this is, if you wanna put your money inside of the stock market, you know that the expected rate of return is something like 8% per year. Well, if you know that, you can compare that against your credit card debt of maybe 24%, which would tell you that you should focus on the higher earning investment, in which case that 24% is much higher and it's guaranteed, so you should pay that off. Unless you know you have the opportunity to invest your money in a 401k account, which would give you a 100% rate of return on your money, in which case you should prioritize that instead. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you're investing inside of your employer-sponsored 401k account, you might find that there is a bajillion choices to pick from and it's gonna become very overwhelming. When I looked at my mom's 401k, I had something specific I wanted to buy for her, but I couldn't find it because her employer told her that she had to have a certain dollar threshold inside of her account, which is when she'd be able to pick that thing, which I thought was really strange. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that whatever you do end up picking, that it's not expensive. Again, a good example is my mom, who doesn't have a ton of money inside of her 401k account, so I wanted her to catch up, which means I wanted a more aggressive strategy and I tried to find a fund that closely tracked the S&P 500. But instead, all I was able to find were random funds with stocks and bonds and other indexes that tracked God knows what. This might be your situation, or you might find yourself owning a target date fund, which again is another mixed bag of stocks and bonds that rebalance depending on your age. Personally, I would stay away from funds that had an expense ratio of half a percent per year. A lot of them are 1%, which is insanely expensive. I would stay away because sometimes that's how companies can make money from their employees on the back end. Don't do it. It's like they cast a poison spell on you. Every turn, it's like management fee, management fee, management fee. I would pick something simpler because the simpler it is, the cheaper it's going to be, which means the better the performance will be in the end. Give me stonks or give me game over. There's a lot of nuances that I've left out of this strategy guide because it's almost impossible to cover every person's unique situation, but it really depends on what your goals are, what your savings rate is, and what you think your income will look like in retirement. But this template should work for most people because it makes your taxes more efficient, which means you get to invest more money, which means that compound interest effect will be more effective over a long period of time. But if you're ever confused and unsure, just talk to your tax person or whoever handles your investment for you and show them the link that I will leave in the description below the video, which is that Bogleheads guide. In the meantime though, love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Go grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin at this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. Go get your two free stocks with Webull using the link down below, and then you can go track them automatically with my spreadsheet also linked down below in my video. Again, love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.